Good day everyone, welcome to my virtual classroom. For today's video, I'm gonna be discussing with you how to construct frequency distribution table out of a given raw data. So this is a jump start when we are supposed to compute for the mean, the median, and the mode of group data. So you have to learn first how to construct frequency distribution table. Okay. So first, the first thing that you're going to do is to get the range, okay? As you know, we've discussed it uh, uh, from the previous lesson that the range is the difference between the high score and the low score, okay? And then, you have to divide the range by the desired number of steps to get the interval. So, take note of the two keywords here. So, the two keywords here are, of course, range, the desired number of steps, the step distribution and of course you have to identify the interval okay so next number three is to start doing the step interval or the classes or this is the identifying now the correct class width okay and then the number of steps so the number of steps depends on the of course the desired number of steps that you are that you are supposed to uh, identify usually the desired number of steps ranges from 5 to 15 okay it depends on the number of raw data okay and of course the number four is you have to tally and then get the frequency of each class or each class width okay so tally you know how to tally okay and then get the median class not the median class supposedly, but this is the class mark or the midpoint in each class width or class limits. So later you'll understand what is the class mark. You understand how to tally and how to construct frequency distribution table. So these are the major steps or the important steps. Again, get the range, divide the range by the desired number of steps, and get the interval. Start doing the step interval and then tally, and then get the class mark or the midpoint. Okay, say for example, I have here raw data of mathematics test scores of 45 college students. Okay, so suppose I gave a 50 item test, okay, 50 item test of mathematics test, okay, and here are the scores of the 45 students. Okay, here are the scores, 45. We're, if we're going to count the raw scores, that will total to 45. Okay, so with this given, how are you going to construct a frequency distribution table? Say, for example, your teacher asks you to compute for the mean. What is the mean of that? Are you going to, uh, are you going to add all of those? So it's taxing. You're also to ask the, uh, to get the median and, of course, to get the mode. So the easiest way, if you have already uh, numerous or many raw scores or data, uh, finding the central tendency using the ungroup uh, will be difficult for you. So what we need to do is to present them first, the raw data in a frequency distribution table. Okay, so let's follow the steps now. First, we have, we have to identify the range, okay? So we have to identify the range and we have 48 minus 28 equals 20, okay? So if uh, we are going to check whether uh, the high score, okay, the high score here is 48 and of course the low score is 28, so we have to subtract them. So we have the range is 20, okay? So the range is 20. So, in this, since uh, the, the range is 20, so step 2 is to divide this range by the desired number of steps. Our desired number of steps here is 7. So, I just uh, think of 7 as the desired number of steps. And dividing 20 by 7 is equal to 2.85. So, what we're going to do is to round this up. Okay, so what is this 3? 3 now is what you call the interval of the class limit. Okay, this is the interval now. 
Okay? So, looking at your uh, looking at your raw data, okay, so the lowest score is 28, so we're going to construct a distribution table. Okay, so that means that the that the smallest score will be 28. Okay, so here is the uh, the table now. Okay, I'll explain this one by one. Okay, so I hope you pay attention. So since 28 is the smallest, so we're going to start here. And 28 basically, okay, this is the smallest the smallest score so we can start with 28 or sometimes uh, the smallest number is also divisible by the interval so this could be 27 but it's okay to use 28 because 28 is the uh, the lowest score so since we have three since we have uh, three as the interval so that means we're going to count, okay, 28, so 28, 29, 30. So if we're going to look at the class width, the class width has three, okay, has three interval. And if you're going also to count 20, from 28, this is the lower boundary, from 28 up to 31, the interval is also three. The same is true with the upper limit. So 30 up to 33 is three. The interval is 3. 33 plus 3, we have 36. Plus 3, 39. Plus 3, 42. Plus 3, 45. And plus 3, we have 48. The same is true with the lower limit. Okay? So, th this, this is how we construct now the steps. So, we're going to count. So, sabi natin, we have 7 as the desired number of steps. And the desired number, the ideal number of steps is from 5 to 15 actually. So we have 7. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So let's count again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's absolutely 7 steps. Okay, from 28 to 30 until 46 to 28. Okay? So... That is now our class limits. Okay, after constructing the class limits, we are now ready to we are now ready to tally. Okay, let us uh, find uh, the numbers from 46 to 48. If you're going to look at the row scores, okay, 46 to uh, 48, let us count. Okay, so we have, okay, 1. 46 to uh, 48. Where's the other one? This 2. Okay, so 1, 2. So that's why we have 2. Okay, from 43 to 45. So let's count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, and 6, and 7. So there are 7. Okay, so what about 40 to 42? So 40 to 42, let's count. 40 to 42, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So there are 10, 40 to 42. Okay, so let us now also... Find the frequency of 37 to 39. So 37 to 39. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, where's the other one? 8. So there are 8. Okay, 34 to 36. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7. One more. 8. Okay, so we have 8. Then 34 to 36. 8. Oh, 9. 
10. So there are 10. So you must be vigilant and you must be really your eyes is clear in finding these numbers. So 31 to 33, so we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? And 4. And of course, 29 to 30, so we have 1, 2. Okay, so there are 2. So sorry, this is actually 2. So let us check whether our uh, answer is correct. 28 to 30. Okay, so 2 plus 7, so we have 9, 19, 27, 27 plus 10, 37, 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay. So this is 4 actually because we still have 28 and 30. Yes, so this is 4. Okay, so that is how we check our frequency. So this is correct. So this is 4. So by adding now, so we have 45. The frequency is 45. So you see that I do it in real time. Okay, so you can see the difficulty in tallying the raw scores because one number might, uh, one mistake might lead you to another mistake. Okay, so you really have to be uh, responsible in tallying the raw scores. Okay, so we have now this uh, class, we have now this frequency distribution table. And what is missing now is the title. So table 1. So you can write here table 1. Okay. And then the title of this table. Okay. Okay. So that is how we construct a frequency distribution table. So if uh, you find it uh, confusing you can go back to the video and then again review how do we construct frequency distribution table